Hello, uh, my name is Sean Phillips. This is my Module 16 presentation, a case study on missing booster club funds. Uh, before we get into this, I want to just talk about the case here a little bit. We have a, a school, a middle school here uh, in an older part of town that maybe uh, once used to be maybe a little higher SES community, but over time some of the more wealthy individuals have moved out to the suburbs, and now we have an overall lower SES uh, makeup of our, our school. Uh, the school, though, in, in general is very supportive, and you have lots of parents that like to volunteer their time, specifically through the PTA, where they will volunteer to help uh, take uh, admission tickets and concession stands because there's only one principal. Uh, in this case, that's Mr. Stevens, who's a principal at this school, and those parents will help out since he has no assistant principals. Uh, our story focuses around Mrs. Bowman. Mrs. Bowman is a parent that volunteers through the PTA, and one of her students, Lucy, is very good at cheerleading, and she, uh, through competition, wins a trip, uh, and uh, she's looking for a way to pay for it. One of the things that she inquires about, she asks Mr. Stevens if maybe the PTA could, could pay for her trip, and in general, Mr. Stevens says, no, that's not something that we'll do because the funds are intended to benefit all children, not just an individual child. Um, the question really arises at a basketball event where Mrs. Bowman is now helping to uh, take tickets uh, for admission purposes. And at the end of the night, Mr. Stevens gets a report from Ms. Bowman that says in a handwritten note that there were 10 tickets that were torn and damaged and she discarded them. So those that pre-numbered ticket system is going to be missing 10 tickets there. Well, as a coincidence or maybe not, another parent also says that they had paid with a $50 bill that night. And it just so happens that Ten tickets equals exactly fifty dollars. And at the end of the night, when Mr. Stevens counts the uh, the admission uh, profits, he sees that there is no fifty dollar bill in that. So the question becomes, where did it go? All right. So based on this, uh, identifying the problem, what do I know about this? Well, I know that there could be some ticket proceeds missing because I know that there were fifty dollars that were a fifty dollar bill that was given by a parent by the name of Mr. Dumas, and uh, I don't see that. Second thing, I know that 10 tickets are reported as torn and are unaccounted for. In the reading, it says that they were discarded, so they are nowhere to be found. I also know that uh, the $50 bill was reported as paid, but it is not in the cash box at the end of the night. I also know that there, that $50 is the exact equivalent of the missing ticket, so it would be very easy for someone to maybe take that $50 bill and put it in their pocket uh, and just account for it by the missing tickets. And second, I already know that Ms. Bowman is in need of money based upon the meeting that, uh, that she had had with Mr. Stevens before. And uh, could that she happens to be working the gate, so it, could this be a situation that uh, she's maybe trying to uh, skim a little money off the top to help fund uh, the, uh, the situation, the, uh, the trip for her daughter? All right, so what do I need to know? In order to be able to address this, I need to know what did you do with the torn tickets? So I'm going to have to investigate to see where they went. Uh, can I account for them? The second thing, I need to ask the other gate worker. In our, our uh, case study, it talks about there's always two parents at the gate, two parents at concession stand, so there should have been another adult working there. Did they see the damage tickets, or did they even see the $50 bill? Also, I need to know what the job duties were. Who dealt with the money? Who dealt with the tickets? It should be separated duties uh, while both being there together. Um, that way, one person can't get rid of tickets and take money at the same time. And then were, was the final total at the end of the night, was it counted together? Uh, that way there could be a check, uh, checks and balances there of is the amount that we took in equal to the final amount. And then another thing that I think I need to know is was change ever needed for that evening? We know in the, the case study that says it was a busy night, so it could be possible that maybe that $50 bill just made its way from the gate to the change box as the gate needed to purchase some change to make it through the night. So I would want to see if that ever happened. All right, so our overall problem then is that admission tickets are unaccounted for with the potential of gate funds missing. That is our problem that we need to investigate. So what would I do? Well, the plan of action depends on you know, kind of where the investigation goes. No matter what happens, I think there are some definite things that need to occur. First, I need to check the change box. That would be the easiest, best solution. I check the change box, and then I see there's probably a definite protocol of you need this many 20s, this many 10s, this many 5s, things like that. And if I notice there's an additional $50 bill, and the total amount remains the same, problem solved. And all we have to do is address the idea of accounting for those tickets every night 
so that we uh, know for sure where they are. There'd be no harm at all in this, just some general retraining needed. Um, the second thing that I would do is talk with Mrs. Bowman and ask her about the torn tickets and what did she do with them. Uh, I think it mentions in our story that uh, she discarded them. Where were they discarded? Uh, what about a $50 bill? Did you take that in? Um, and the same thing, or I'll start, sorry, uh, also talk about the different job duties that she had. Uh, those should be split. Did we follow those procedures? Was one person taking tickets and one person uh, taking the, the actual cash uh, for this? Um, I would talk with the other gate worker. I think in this case, uh, if we thought that there was possible wrongdoing, then it would be good to kind of compare stories to see if both of them were on the same page. So if tickets were torn, that is something that would probably be told from one person to another. And uh, you could see where they disposed of in the same way, even though they should have been turned in at the end of the night. Do the stories match up? Same thing regarding the $50 bill. Job duties and procedures. We also want to make sure that we're comparing. So in general, we're comparing stories here just to make sure that everything seems to flow together uh, and uh, look for any inconsistencies that might happen there. Uh, finally, no matter what, I would need to try to retrain or refresh the memory of our staff on the appropriate handling of admission tickets. Okay, it's not okay to just throw away tickets. That's something that they all need to uh, be trained on, as well as the reporting and handling of money at the end of the night. Uh, and then also, I would probably rotate responsibilities. It's just good practice to make sure that uh, you don't have the same people doing the same things all the time. Uh, just create some extra safeguards there. Now, if I feel like there's wrongdoing going on, there's a couple of things that I would do. First, I would go double check if there, I can't find the $50 bill anywhere. I would check with Mr. Dumas and ask him, Are, did you really spend $50, uh, an exact $50 bill there, uh, to just try to you know, make sure that he wasn't just talking big uh, that evening? I would also talk with the PTA president and ask if there have been any other issues reported about uh, Mrs. Bowman. Uh, have they had any other questionable uh, actions on her part? And if not, maybe alert the PTA president of, hey, here's what I'm seeing. Uh, make sure that you are aware because we want to try to maintain a good positive relationship with our PTA. Um, if the evidence tends to show that I think there was misdoing, I would call Miss Bowman in and talk with her again and just let her know, hey, listen, there's $50 of missing. You were the one that was definitely in line for handling this money. You reported it, didn't report that it was missing. Um, so do you have that? If not, we need to, to be reimbursed for that. And then if she definitely did uh, take uh, funds from the school, then she would need to be removed from her duties and not be allowed to collect money anymore. All right, so how do I resolve the issue? What is best for students? Well, the best thing for students would, there's no wrongdoing found and nobody ever knows anything. All of the investigation would be done behind closed doors. So that would be ideally the change, it's in the change box and nobody knows anything at all. Also, what would be good is that I've investigated behind closed doors and we don't make it a public issue. Um, even though it is, is not good to take $50 in the grand scheme of things, I don't think $50 is worth raising a big uh, public outcry against a family in your school. So by keeping things behind closed door, we maintain the, uh, the positive environment for, of our school and we'll continue to see community support. Um, by keeping it out of the public, I think that's also good for Lucy and the other Bowman children. Uh, we don't have to worry about them uh, having any negative uh, interactions with uh, other students or, th or having their name drugged through the mud at all and something that their mom did or didn't do if things uh, work out with it being in a change box. And uh, I think something else that uh, what's best for students to resolve the issue is Mr. Stevens, uh, it says in this, the story that he didn't go around and check very much on groups and he needs to do that. Because if those tickets were torn, it probably would have been mentioned to him that night, and then you wouldn't have to worry about it. So he needs to realize he needs to check on his groups more, even though he may be busy. What's best for students in this case? Well, if wrongdoing occurred, then what's best for them is to confront Mrs. Bowman. Okay, Because we need to be reimbursed and we need to remove her. Uh, that makes sure that the total amount of funds for students remains constant and it gets its full amount. Uh, and we also are preventing situations where you could have potential loss or theft uh, into the future. Um, 
What's best for students is retraining of all staff. That way everyone is properly handing, handling things and rotating duties, just adding in extra safeguards there. That way we're trying to ensure the best practices for collection of funds so that students benefit and they are getting all of the, the funds that they are, are raising there. Um, if wrongdoings also uh, going on, what's best is to alert the PTA president. We want them to be aware. That way it doesn't impact anything else. The PTA probably works with multiple schools and they would probably uh, want to know uh, if one of the parents is causing issues. And then what's best for students is whatever we need to do. This would be a parent issue, not a student issue. And we would want to do whatever we could to reduce the impact on Lucy and her siblings. Um, if, if there is wrongdoing, I'm sure even if you try to eliminate any talk about it, it's going to arise and we need to try to protect those kids. All right, so as I was going through this, what was I thinking? First thing I thought when you read it, it just seems awful convenient and it just seems to automatically think that Mrs. Bowman kept the $50. And I think that's something as a future administrator you need to do is you need to balance those initial thoughts and be patient and think through things a little more. I did think also, hey, protocols aren't being followed here with handling admission tickets. Uh, parents need to be trained and they need to make sure they're following those. And uh, the last thing that I was also thinking was Mr. Stevens didn't fulfill his duties. Uh, and if you don't fulfill your duties, issues arise. Uh, so we want to make sure that even though we're busy, you can't micromanage, but you still have uh, responsibilities to uh, be checking up on how things are going. Uh, what was I feeling? Well, I was concerned about potential theft. You never want to lose money from your school. I was concerned about the Bowman children because if your parent steals money, you're going to hear some things and that could be a negative learning experience for you. And then I was also uh, feeling about how do I go about keeping the community united uh, because you don't want to have a big controversy in your school if you can avoid it. Uh, what did I value? Well, privacy. I don't think anyone wants to have their name put out in public, so dealing with things behind closed doors is important. I was trying to value how to achieve the least impact on school and student, so not jumping to conclusions, really trying to think things out before acting. And I was also valuing ensuring that it doesn't continue. A one-time $50, uh, $50 missing one time isn't a huge deal, uh, but if it continues, it can become a very big deal, so we need to ensure that that doesn't happen again. All right, so what are some unresolved issues? Well, we still don't know how the Bowman family is going to pay for Lucy's cheer trip. Maybe we could uh, meet with her and talk about potential fundraising deals that they as a family could do outside of school so that it's not tied directly to school. Um, is wrongdoing happening in other areas? We don't know that yet. That would have to happen with our conversations with PTA, maybe with uh, other schools that this pair might be working with. And we don't know what Mr. Stevens is going to do if it goes public. How is he going to uh, do some damage control and promote uh, you know, the, the proper handling of money and maintain a positive attitude about his school? So how did I promote effective and efficient management? Well, dealing with the problem immediately prevents future occurrence. That's very effective management there. Uh, by dealing with people indirectly involved with it, that makes the process more efficient. Instead of asking people out on the periphery, you're talking immediately with those people in order to help them give you direct facts so you can deal with it quickly. Retraining of staff helps eliminate confusion and promotes the appropriate practices. So that then becomes more effective and efficient management of handling of funds. How do I promote the learning of every student, the social learning of every student? Well, funds are going to all students and not just an individual. That's something that, that benefits every single student. Uh, by keeping the Bowman kids safe from negative peer interaction, every student is going to have a positive interaction and create, instead of creating tension between individuals. And also by preventing rumor spreading amongst the community, that's going to keep positive interaction amongst the community as well. So all this is an attempt to try to maintain a social balance that is positive for our school and between individuals. How do I promote student academic learning? By keeping discussions private, it's going to avoid distractions uh, through multiple grades. We know some of the students are at the high school. Um, the training ensures future funds go to enhance student learning so that they have the maximum amount of resources to benefit uh, with uh, extra learning opportunities. And by maintaining good relationship with the PTA, that's going to allow for future academic resources as well. So, uh, you know, by doing all these things, I think we put together a decent uh, strategy for trying to address this and hopefully we can solve it uh, and make sure that going forward that all proper protocol calls are followed and that if there is any wrongdoing going that that won't happen in the future. So again, I think it's important that 
We don't blow this over into a huge deal. Let's try to prevent it from happening and becoming one because of one isolated incident incident isn't a problem yet, but it could be, and I think we can handle it uh, by dealing with it this way. So thanks.